Hey, check this out. It's a new episode of How Made. We got a 3D marker going on here. This is something that kind of got a little rushed because just for time reasons. And also because I can't keep track of all these different layers at once. But look at that. It's a marker spinning in 3D. What could you not like about it? We've got... We've got a lot of these keyframes that are looking kind of yellowish. There's something weird about them. And that's because I'm using this command that I wrote, this sort of little script that I wrote called spline tween. And that uh, is a tool that you can use in place of a tween that can sort of smoothly interpolate stuff uh, in a way that most tweens cannot be done. And because I've got such a big monitor going on here, just because this is my main monitor, I usually animate on my second monitor here that's a little smaller, this is going to be kind of laggy. So I'm a little, this is going to not quite, you know, this is going to look a little jankier than I would like it to be. But if you've got multiple different things you can do here, you can transform it in all sorts of different ways. And let's add in one more keyframe. Let's make it go into our character's eye, just like that. See that? Either it's some amazing magic going on or somebody just like got viciously attacked you know like if it's going into your eye it's either really magical or it's really bad it's blind tween and it's going to go through every single keyframe and make make another key make tons more keyframes and there we go it's interpolated all of them and that's something that i use here to to animate the sort of yeah the very smooth movement going on that you can't really do when you're animating that like for example this little oval here being squashed and then also becoming unsquashed at the same time as it's moving and the speed at which it's unsquashing is different from the speed at which it's moving and it's like so many things going on at the same time that it's easier to just like be it's here at this time it's here at that time it's here at this time make it smooth in between and that's how that was done the feet, look at the feet, oh, the feet. Like I would have liked it so that the legs were not in the middle there. I would have liked it to be a little more balanced, but it's too hard to do, too hard. Can I find it? Feet, where are you? There you are, so that's a graphic. A little foot moving around. You can see the foot's a little bit ahead of the leg, but the foot actually doesn't change shape at all. It's just a single shape. That's moving, okay, so. Because we've got graphics inside of graphics, we've got a lot of nested motion because this is just a foot, this is a foot spinning around a leg and also moving up and down. So it looks like we drill into there and we get the horizontal movement. Now the horizontal movement was above. So now this is the foot spinning around the leg. Then we drill into that, we got the foot moving up and down. Drill into that, we finally get the final shape. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six graphics inside of each other. It's too many. All right, so that's going up and down. Now it's going left and right. Now it's going, that's going up. Now that's going left and right. So that's how I got the circular movement there. I think this was actually using a new feature that I was super new to me, which is the sign easing feature. I want to zoom into this, but I can't, you know, just don't feel like it, you know? So we got a little sign easing thing here and that's, Something that you couldn't do before was have a mathematically perfect sign. So if you now, if you layer these on top of each other, you get perfectly circular movement because this is actually a sine wave. And there's math. You know, this is, this is this is the shape of a circle right in front of our eyes. So those two are moving around, and you get a foot effect. And you know, one thing that's a real pain is if you have all these things nested inside of each other, six different ways then you want to modify something that's at the very deepest level. You have to make a copy of each level above it too. So I think that's another reason why this is, you know, a little sloppier looking than I would have liked it to be is because it's just some of these things are a little bit too much trouble. You know, I wouldn't don't, don't do this in flash. Really? You really shouldn't. And then the arms here are, that's just a single movie clip, a single symbol that's being moved left and right. Yeah. So that's that. And that was done with the spline tween. And so that's, you know, a maybe something that the spline tween is good for, you know, it helps you do things that would have required nesting in other situations where you have, 
yeah, scaling and movement and rotation all happening at the same time. The spline tween just helps you make it just smooth. That's it. No questions asked. And I was glad that I was able to use this. I was able to use this symbol in a lot of different places. Here, this is like the most important part. And that's that movement going on. But then you also got marker jumping somewhere. Uh, this is a little bit, a little bit janky, a little laggy going on here. Oh yeah, this turning. See there, I get to use this over and over again. So I kind of got my my money's worth or my work's worth. Yeah, that's shaking. So it's going. The base movement is slow enough that I can just like put down keyframes and adjust it like granularly enough as much as I need to. So there's that slowly turning, and we go back a little bit and. If we can find the part where marker is jumping. So look, there's another frame of the same thing. All the others are just drawn in, but this guy, this guy is special. A little, a little hidden secret inside. If you can find the part where marker is jumping, that's, that would be good. Oh yeah, this little scene here, this is a fun one. Look at that. And I think Puffball here, I'm not too good with like the new movie clips because they're still super, uh, the new motion tweens because they're still super new to me, but one thing I know they're good for is moving things with graphs. So we got a little graph action going on here. Do we double click? Yeah, there we go. Like, look at that. That's too many lines. What's going on here? Like, what, where does, how do you ease? I don't understand this as well as I would like to. So, but all I know is that you can see the, if you were to zoom in, if I were to zoom this video in, you would see that these dots are a little denser like in the back and then they as puffball gets closer and starts moving faster they're further away from each other so that's actually really good that you get to see the easing visually in front of you and then you can just drag that there's puffball you know going on a little scenic route there woo there's that okay see i think i did the same thing with bell but it's all synchronized with the movement of the background and the movement of marker that it gives a more convincing 3D effect when they're all added together, they're all on top of each other. They just all sum up, they add together to make an amazing experience. Okay, this is a graphic I'm tweeting. This is how I always do camera movement is just with a graphic and I think that's just the simplest and easiest way to do it. There's marker jumping and I just, all I'm doing is just going through different, I just have the same graphic here and I'm just telling it to be at different frames at different points. I'm not even like doing any sort of fancy time, I don't know, time remapping or anything. I'm just being, I think I just manually set these frame numbers myself because it really doesn't matter. He's moving up and down anyway. You're not going to see it if it's kind of inconsistent. So yeah, marker jumping. That's it. See you next time on How Made.